Hallelujah once again. I thank you for all. Uh, thank you all for gathering together in the presence of God to worship the Lord this morning. Praise God. And I know I know that there are uh, there are uh, uh, some more people uh, joining with us this morning uh, for this uh, mensual service. Uh, we welcome you also and greet you all in the master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So this morning we are coming and sitting in the presence of God to hear the word of God. Hallelujah. And I thank uh, uh, thank God for the uh, this, uh, for this guest speaker. I mean, who is with us today this morning and uh, Pastor Sintil uh, Krishnan. So we are so thankful to you for uh, uh, joining us uh, this morning uh, to share the word of God. Uh, Pastor Sintil uh, Krishnan from Chennai. You know, he is ministering uh, with uh, uh, the Assemblies of God Church in uh, uh, Chennai and uh, uh, he's a blessed man of God and he is used by the, by God in, in different places. And uh, I know that, uh, you know, uh, he is the brother-in-law of uh, 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 Sister Amy Cedric and we are so glad that you are here with us and uh, uh, we are uh, so glad that you are going to share the word of God this morning and, uh, you know, uh, I think he is the he is the he is the leading. I mean, pastor of uh, uh, a, a congregation of uh, about uh, uh, twelve hundred people. I think so. We are so glad that you are with us this morning, and uh, uh, he is blessed with uh, his wife uh, Winnie, Sam, and two children, uh, Aradhana and Abe. So we are so glad to be here that uh, uh, you are going to share the word of God. We all are sitting in the presence of God with a, a prayerful attitude and uh, we are going to receive the word of God from the servant of God this morning. Hallelujah. Let's all, I mean, uh, uh, let's, let's all, I mean, put our hands together for uh, uh, Pastor, Pastor uh, uh, Sendil Krishnan, I mean, in our midst this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. We can hear. Thank you so much. It's uh, such a joy to uh, meet you all this morning, to join you with your church and uh, service this morning. And uh, I want to bring greetings from Chennai. I'm bringing greetings from my family and my church. And um, I'm really uh, glad that God has given me an opportunity. And want to thank uh, Pastor Sam for giving me an opportunity to be with you and uh, uh, learn from the word of God this morning. Uh, so uh, along with that, um, I want to actually, uh, when I was uh, just checking, uh, went through your website, I saw one of the phrase, it said, uh, church is not a place where you go to, it is a family you belong. And uh, I want to really thank God for that. Uh, why? Because not many churches uh, really understand the importance of uh, for, uh, what church is all, all about. Sometimes churches are just a service, but, but uh the scripture teaches us the church is a family and I was so glad because this is what we teach in our church as well. And uh, so I'm not uh, with a church which is different from us and I believe we are all of the same family of God this morning. So um, I want to quickly go into the word of God and I believe God wants to speak to you uh, this morning and um, I want all of you to gear up and like, you know, really uh, look forward to God so that he can speak to you. And uh, this morning, uh, uh, I, I want each of you to like, you know, look up to God. And that's, that's what uh, I want to say. It's not about who is speaking. It's about God who is going to speak to us. Amen. Amen. If you believe, uh, I've titled my sermon as, um, Are You Immune to COVID-19? Some of you might be thinking, okay, we are running away from COVID. And even in church, are we, why are we talking about COVID-19? And, and I want to talk about this. Why? Because... God wants us to be strong during these uh, times like this. So uh, I have titled my sermon as uh, uh, Are You Immune to COVID-19? I believe it is on the screen. You can uh, have a, a look at it. And um, uh, even if you are not able to follow it, it's absolutely fine. But I want you to open your heart to God and uh, like, you know, listen to his voice than mine this morning. So I want to start with a quick prayer. So uh, please close your eyes and uh, bow down with me as we look up to God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this morning, Father Lord. Master, nothing happens, oh Father Lord, uh, without your knowledge. Nothing, oh Father God, happens without, oh Father, your Master Lord, sovereign will, oh Father God. We this morning pray that, Father, along with the church, Eternal Life Church at California, Father, we pray together and we look up to you, Father Lord. We don't look up to 
to any man, but we look up to you this morning, oh Father God. And we pray, Father, let your word come through, oh Father God. Let our hearts, oh Father, be receptive. Oh Father, let our ears be attentive, oh Father God, and our hearts be receptive to hear your word, oh Father God, Master. We give you all the glory. We give this time in your hands, O oh Father. May you speak, O oh Father God, into our lives, O oh Father God, Master. Yes, Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to start with um, what Peter says uh, in um, uh, one of his letters. Uh, Peter says that the judgment of God begins with the house of God. The judgment of God begins with the house of God. And he says, uh, if... If, if the outcome of those who do not obey the gospel, what will happen to them? If it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinners? God is saying that if he wants to deal with the nations, he wants to first deal with his people. If you see in the Old Testament, every time when the prophets went around and prophesied about the future, prophesied about what is going to come, for the nation of Israel and, and, and remind them and warn them about the judgment of God that is coming upon the nations for their disobedience. God first judges his house, his people, before he deals with the nations that are surrounded, the nations of Israel. And today I want to tell you, God wants to deal certain things with us and he wants us to be strong in him before he can deal with the world. So this morning, I, I, I pray that no God will convict in our hearts and make us stronger in him so that God can use us to touch the world. The judgment begins in the house of God. Sometimes we, when we think about the end times, when we think about all those things that are happening around, we think about like, you know, God is judging the world. Even during the COVID times, some of us, uh, we would have uh, seen some videos which talk about how God is judging the nations. But I want to tell you, God first wants to deal with his people before he wants to deal with the world. Take a moment and think. Are you immune to COVID-19? Are you immune to COVID-19? The world actually is struggling when the entire world is shaken due to COVID-19 situation. You know what is happening in the world. We know that every uh, government, every organization, every uh, international, intra-governmental uh, organizations like WHO or UN or any such organizations, everybody, they are working day in and day out. They want to actually fix the problem. They want to somehow handle this problem well. They're doing everything that is possible. They're fighting this COVID-19, trying to handle it well. And they want to somehow come out of it successfully. But was COVID-19 a surprise for the Church of God? It can be a surprise for the world, but was it a surprise for the Church of God? Because in the word it is written, it is actually the church was already cautioned. If you see, the church was cautioned beforehand. The Church of Jesus Christ was cautioned to be immune, not just for COVID, not just for COVID, but for all kinds of troubles and trials. How many of you will say amen? Many times uh, we don't say amen to tough situations that the Bible puts across to us. You know, James says that when you go through troubles and trials, consider it a pure joy. I don't think these kind of sermons are preached these days. We are, we are, we are more hearing about, okay, God is with you. God is going to help you. God is going to bless you. God is going to make you successful. Yes, our God makes us successful. Our God gives us success. But he says, uh, my people should be ready to suffer for my name's sake. My people should be ready for all kinds of troubles and trials. And, and, and we are already cautioned. But the question is today, the question is, I want all of you to think about it for a moment. The question is, are you spiritually immune for the end times? Are we spiritually immune for the end times? I, I'm using this terminology, immunity, vaccine, and, and like, you know, what is very, uh, uh, like, you know, relevant to the time like this, everybody is talking about it. Everybody is like now talking about how we need to get our immune system up to fight COVID-19. But, but I want to ask you, what is the immunity of your spiritual life? How immune are we for the end times? Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. 
or Luke chapter 21, both talks about the end times. Jesus talks about the end times. We know this passage. Jesus actually answered to them and said, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming that I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. But see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. In, in the Gospel of Luke, he has included about the pestilence everywhere. And all these are the beginning of the birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted, to put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. And that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and each and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness. The love of most will grow old. But the one who stands firm till the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Actually, I've included the uh, passage in the uh, slides itself. Um, we can um, go through that if we have the slides ready. Um, so. Um, Matthew chapter 24 talks about there are 10 signs that Jesus actually talks about. 10 signs. We will be deceived. This is the age of deception. Many of us know whatever we watch in TV is not the truth. People manipulate all things. This morning I want to tell you this is the age of deception. Jesus gives about many such end times symptoms, end times signs of wars, rumors of wars. And he's saying that don't be alarmed. This must happen and then the end will come. Nations will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Natural calamities, famines, earthquakes, pestilence. And he says these are the birth pains. Birth pains. And he says we would be handed over and we would be persecuted. We would be hated. And he says many will turn from the faith. How many of you know Nations have turned from God, turned away from God. Nations that actually sent missionaries to the third world countries. Nations that actually sent missionaries into third world countries have now turned away from God. How many of you know that nowadays people love and uh, have a dog in their house but not have a child? It's become uh, uh, very much prevalent everywhere that you know, people want to live all alone and they are happy with a dog. Uh, people forgot God and they are now replacing it with the dog. I don't know why. And, and we see all of this is happening. People are moving away from faith. People uh, don't want to, like, you know, nations that are Christian nations are walking away from God. These are the signs and many false prophets, false teachers will rise up. Today, let's think about it. Are we immune for all of these things? Because if we are just focused only on COVID, I want to tell you, the moment you come out of COVID, the next thing is waiting for us. We need to start thinking about, hey, no matter what, whatever comes, it has been already cautioned in the scripture that I need to be immune to all such things, all kinds of troubles and trials, all kinds of troubles and trials. I need to be immune. And that's what we need to think about this morning. And, and uh, if you think about the word immunity, Immunity is nothing but an ability of an organism to fight or resist a particular infection. That's what a definition that we are giving for immunity. And what is a vaccine? Vaccine is something that is used to stimulate the production of antibodies and provide immunity against such diseases. So the scripture is asking us to be spiritually immune, if I use the term for being strong, for all kinds of these things, troubles and trials of the end times, which is when, when, when it comes to our life, if we have strong union, you will be able to fight it. You will be able to withstand it. So what is the vaccine that we need to take even before it comes? What is the vaccine that we need to have in our life, which is already given, which will enable us to like, you know, build a strong immune? How many of you know, uh, when we are in, in sin, we are weak. But when we are actually overcoming that sinful nature in our lives, we become immune to the troubles and trials, the testing that this world brings. Amen. Amen. Are you with me, church, this morning? If you are 
if you are like you know following me you can wave out your hands so that i can know and you can put a thumbs up on your screen whatever so i know i, I know uh, i cannot uh, talk to each and every one of you but but i i i could at least see you and talk so jesus said in 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 john 16 verse 33 he says i have told you these things so that you may have peace in this world you will have in this world you will have trouble but take heart i have overcome the world i want you to mark this passage john chapter 16 verse 33 john chapter 16 verse 33 if you see jesus is saying i am telling you all this when he is talking about his death and resurrection to his disciples he is saying i am telling all of this what is going to happen not to scare you today when we see the news today when we see even messages that are preached it is bringing a lot of fear into our lives people are preaching about end times to bring fear but jesus is saying i am telling you all of this not to have fear he says so that in me you may have peace so today in this fearful time like this we need to have peace in jesus only christ can give us that peace because in this world we are going to have troubles and trials in this world we are going to have troubles and trials he says i have i have told you all of this so that you may have peace in this world you will have troubles have peace in me as i said earlier james talks about consider it a pure joy when you go through troubles and trials because that's going to make us stronger because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything if god is sending these things into our lives it is to make us strong not to make us weak it is to make us strong not to make us weak so this morning i want to talk about two things one what are the indications of uh, low immunity what are the indications of low immunity before i move on i just want to quickly check with uh, petrika chacha were you able to receive my uh, slide and the whatsapp no i did not uh, i have sent you a pdf in your whatsapp number uh, no it, okay okay If you have, we can put that. Yeah, so that I'll, I'll get it arranged. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So, two things I want to talk about. One one segment talks about how to find out the indications of low immunity. If we are low immune in our spiritual life, what are the indications that shows we are low in spiritual life? What are the indications? The first thing is that not having the assurance of one salvation. when our personal walk with god is tested when our personal walk with god is shaky when we don't walk with god on a regular basis we need to see that is the time it's an indication that shows that our immune is low because it hinders when when our relationship with god is hindered then our relationship our 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 salvation the walk of salvation the path of salvation is hindered the first indication of low immunity is that how sure are we about our salvation how sure are we about our salvation we need to check about our relationship with god how is our walk with god i want to ask you is god the god of your past alone is he god is he just the god of your past or is god of your present as well and your future because sometimes uh, we can walk our life with the past experiences that we had with god we might walk our life with the experience that we had earlier but what is your experience today are you experiencing god today are we walking with god on a daily basis because that assures our walk with god assures that we are in the journey we are in the path way to salvation when that is not happening we we become low in our immune and that gives the enemy a foothold to actually hurt us a foothold to actually knock us down are we immune not having the assurance of salvation i want you all to think 
is the presence of god in your life evident are you able to are you able to uh, feel the presence of god in your life if not then it is an indication that we are becoming low in our immune the first thing the second point is that controlled by the power of sin what is the indication of low immunity is we are controlled by the power of sin are you led by the spirit or controlled by the flesh which is a bondage of sin we need to ask ourselves am i led of the spirit or am i led of my flesh is my flesh leading me into doing all sort of these things it is an indication to show that there is a control there is a control of sin over my life that shows that we are low immune we have already been infected with some kind of viruses some kind of sin because sin grows inside out it actually eats us from inside out when sin is there inside imagine if if a if a person is affected with covid if he has strong immunity is going to fight that when he doesn't have a strong immune then the virus takes over and it affects internally and he needs to handle many such things in his, his body has to handle many such things before he fights the virus whether he survives or not it depends on the immunity in the same way if we have low immune when we have sin in our life sin can bring our immune system down sin can actually make us low immune spiritually because sin has a power sin has a power to control satan controls god's people through sin so this morning the second indication of low immunity is that is there any area of our lives which are still not surrendered to god where sin has a control is that when i talk about sin i'm not just saying about uh, uh, the uh, uh, the immoral uh, factors or like you know some you know, like you know very big sins but even smaller ones smaller ones disobedience for that matter sometimes we just keep pushing away certain responsibilities that god has given to us but we just neglect it is a sin it is a disobedience because the very first sin that uh, adam and eve committed was disobedience i want you to be very careful all kinds of sins if we give place for sin in our life it's going to start eating our immune system it's going to start eating and bring our immune system down it is an indication sin in our life is an indication of low immunity the third thing i want to share about low immunity is that are we driven by the world are we driven by the world because we we understand about sin when we see um uh, in romans chapter 6 and romans chapter 8 paul very clearly says let let sin not reign in your mortal body or do not offer any part of your life to sin let sin not be a master of your life shall have no longer be your master let sin shall no longer be your master now in the third point the indication of low immunity is are we driven by the world are we driven by the world the pleasures of the world or the pain and the suffering and the fear that the world brings into our life every day if we are holding on to the pleasures of the world i want you to understand this very carefully i'm not talking about that uh, we as god's people uh, should not enjoy the life that god has given god has given this life for us to enjoy god has given this life for us to live and glorify him when he blesses us we glorify him when he blesses us we bless others but are we living for the pleasures of the world and this is very important why because when you hold on to the world the world holds on to you when you hold on to the world or the pleasures of the world the world will hold on to you and when you want to leave the world the world never leaves you it holds you back and you need a deliverance from god and that's why we have to be very careful that when we hold on to the world the world holds on to us and when god shakes the world if we are holding on to the world we will also be shaken along with the world that's why paul says don't fix your eyes on this world but fix your eyes on eternal things eternal things there are pain in this world that the world brings in 1 john 2 verse 15 and 17 john clearly says do not love the world or anything in it if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in them for everything in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes 
and the pride of life comes not from the father but from the world the world and its desires pass away but whoever does the will of god lives forever i want you to understand when we hold on to the world the world will hold on to us and the world passes away it pulls us along with it there are many people who would be now gripped with fear because of heavy investment financially or in either, any other possible way now when economy is hit sometimes people are scared we can see the news when people put so much that they are trust in the world and the system of the world and the world shakes it shakes our life if a christian does the same thing it shakes our faith the world can actually pull us out of god sometimes fear of life fear of life because this world actually it 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 hard presses us from every side it just tries to crush us it just tries to like you know struck us down but 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 paul actually writes and says that you know um, we will always carry around in our body the death of jesus so that the life of jesus may also be revealed in our body so anything that comes sometimes it's sickness sickness comes into our life and in it gives so much of pain in our life and when we when we see that you no know, when the world gives and when we fear about that sickness when we fear about that trouble that comes that's why jesus says do not be fearful of the one who can destroy your body but be fearful of the one who can destroy your soul as well and it says put your eyes on jesus he is the one who is going to lead you through so when we have a hold on the world when we hold on to the world it is an indication for low immunity because it's going to eat us down it's going to shake us it's not going to allow us to stand strong it's going to take a hold on us three things three things about low immunity is that uh, an assurance not having an assurance of our salvation and having sin in our life and having a the world having a hold on life on our lives three things but today we are not going to stop there we are going to concentrate on how we can increase our immunity how we can increase our immunity you can um, if you can ask uh, uh, your family members who are seated next to you hey, are you ready to increase your immunity how how strong is your immunity this morning ask the person seated next to you how strong you are in god how strong is your immunity the first thing that we need to do is uh, our life needs to be led of the spirit filled by the spirit and the spirit filled life a life that is filled by the spirit and the life that is led by the spirit if you see anyone who is in god is a new born that's what he is a new creation paul says at the same time jesus said if you need to enter the kingdom of god you have to be born of the water and born of the spirit anyone who is born of the spirit is filled with the holy spirit i want you to read this passage with me ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 to 14 and you also were included in christ when you heard the message of truth the gospel of your salvation when you believed this is what happened to us when you believed you were marked in him with the seal the promised holy spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are god's possession to the praise of his glory i want to tell you this morning our lives needs to be filled of the holy spirit because the holy spirit is the seal of our salvation he is the one who makes us understand that we have been marked by god as his own children that's why we cannot be a traditional sunday christian we cannot be a traditional a person who just attends a sunday service and i'm satisfied with it i'm just doing my spiritual duty no we have to be led of the spirit every one of us have to experience the holy spirit if, because the bible says if anyone believes in me he will have eternal life and we see in the book of acts when when peter preached to the house of cornelius when they believed in what the message was shared they were filled with the holy spirit this morning if we need to increase our immune we need to ask god to fill us with the spirit we need to ask god to baptize us with the spirit of god i know for sure that anyone who believes anyone who confesses that jesus christ is lord the holy spirit is already in you but we cannot stop there we need to continue to ask god to fill us with the spirit of god we would have experienced the spirit or the baptism of the holy spirit once 
some time ago but we cannot depend on that and wait but god is saying every day fill yourself with the spirit of god every day you go into the presence of god and ask god to fill you why because this spirit like how i said the low immunity the indication of low immunity is about not having the assurance of salvation but when you have the holy spirit in you you will have the assurance that you are walking with god and you don't fear anything you don't fear anything when the holy spirit is in you you will not fear anything and again holy spirit is not just speaking in tongues or exercising some spiritual gifts some of us we may not even speak in tongues but it's absolutely fine but we would know for sure that the lord is with me and the lord is leading me every day he speaks to me in various ways but we need to continuously go into the presence of god and ask god to fill us with the spirit because that is very important if if the moment we move away from this idea and we think that no i have received salvation so i can just now live my life i'm 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 good i'm i'm like you know now settled uh, my i have uh, received my ticket of salvation to heaven i want to tell you we will not reach the end because bible again and again talks about the one who stands till the end the one who stands till the end how will we stand till the end is by the help of the holy spirit because he is the one who is going to lead us into the salvation he is the seal for us and secondly acts chapter 1 was said i want you all to read with me acts chapter 1 was said but you will receive power when the holy spirit comes on you and you will be my witness in jerusalem and in all judea samaria and to the ends of the earth i want you to understand when you receive the holy spirit you would receive power in other words it says that you would be clothed with power this power is not about performing something no this power is to stand strong in the faith this power is to live a life that is godly before the ungodly world this power is to not to be shaken by the things of this world this power is something that gives you the strength insight it is not external yes god works of signs and wonders through us but the primary importance of the holy spirit in you is to so that god can make you strong in him we all of us have to ask for the holy spirit second thing i want to move on quickly to the second one our lives built on the word life filled with the spirit and life lived life built on the word you all may know the the sermon that jesus uses this parable and he said about the wise and the foolish builder he talks about how a life that is built on the rock the word of god will stand sometimes we forget that the word of god is not about memorizing what is there in the word of god the word of god is about understanding and and starting to practice it in our lives don't be just hearers of the word but be doers of the word is what the word says and and every one of us today the thing is an average christian does he never know how many books are there in the bible an average christian all he knows is especially in the west what we hear is it has been prominently predominantly been uh, influenced by the reformation theology there are many such things there are few churches which takes time to sit down and and like you know read the word and understand the word spend time and it's not going to happen just because you you read the word for few days no it should be part and parcel of our life if you take the example of david david loved the word of god he was just fascinated by the word of god he said god without your word how will i live because your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path what does it mean we need god's word for every day of our lives and we need god's word for the perspective and the future of our life light a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path the word of god tells me where i am focusing and where i should go where is my destiny and the word of god also talks about how i need to live every day of my life both perspective so today we need to take a commitment if we need to increase our immunity if this is the vaccine for us this is the vaccine for us to put the spirit of god and to feed ourselves with the word of god many such examples we can give paul actually in colossians says be rooted built up and strengthened in god 
be rooted built up and strengthened in god in romans he says uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind how do we renew our mind we renew our mind with the word of god it is very important for every believer every disciple of jesus christ to be strongly rooted in the word when you read psalm 119 how many of you know how many verses are there in psalm 119 and these two kids will easily tell if we are not able to tell maybe we are above 40 that's it we forgot <laughs> psalm 119 has 176 verses 176 words verses if you go through this 176 verse david talks about the word of god in all 175 verses all 175 verses he talks about the word of god i was just fascinated how this man can write about the word 175 times just in a psalm in a single psalm and not just that he has he has wrote about god's word the importance of god's word and how much he desires and loves god's word in many of his psalms but i want to tell you 119 psalm 119 talks about the word of god. i want to tell you how much um, like you know desire we have how much we long to know the word of god this morning because that is what is going to increase our immune to fight any troubles and trials that comes our life comes into our life third thing i want to move on third thing live for your purpose and not for your profession i want you to take a moment and think about it live for your purpose and not for your profession many of us sometimes what happens we equate profession with purpose god created you for a purpose but you can have many professions definitely covid 19 is going to push some of us to choose a different profession things are going to change our job may change you may be multi talented you can just pick up another profession but i want to tell you we are not living for a profession we are living for a purpose that god created us and sometimes christians we we actually settle for a noble cause and then we just want to live a good life a good christian i want to be a good christian i want to live a life i want to tell you that's not the purpose that god called us for even before he formed us in our mother's womb he had a purpose in mind and god wants each and every one of us to fulfill that purpose because when you are sure about your purpose and when you are living for god's purpose nothing can actually shake you nothing can actually derail you because you know god has asked me to do this and he will take me there and that will give you confidence say for example paul god told them that he has to go to rome he will god will take him to rome but god, paul knew that in every city he had troubles and trials he says prison and hardships are waiting for me in every city but i keep going why because i know i have to go to rome god has already told me that i will be going to rome that's why shipwrecks are not stopping him persecution is not stopping him snake bites are not stopping him why because he knew what his purpose is he is not scared about who would finance me he not he was not scared about the economy he knows that my provision comes from god god will take me to the place where he has asked me to go he will take me there he would provide for me nothing is going to stop me till i finish my purpose that's why he was very confident at the end of his life he can write in second timothy and say i have run the race i have fought the good fight i have kept the faith i want to tell you take a moment take some time to think about why are you uh, what is the purpose that god has for you what are the th- things that you do in life why am i even doing it am i doing it for the purpose of god how will i know whether i am doing the right purposes i just put a statement in there if you can read with me if your purpose is not beyond you and your family you need to cross verify your purpose if your purpose is not behind you imagine all that you are doing in your life is all about you then you need to really think about and cross verify that purpose you need to ask god all that you are trying to do all that you are trying to accomplish it is just about you or maybe about your family then you need to think about it because when god chooses people their purposes were beyond their life say for example when god chose abraham abraham's purpose was beyond his family it was beyond his life beyond his family his purpose was to be a blessing to nations and he has to pay the price 
He didn't even see the promise that God told him. That you will be a blessing. Your family will be a blessing to all people in the world. And it was accomplished through, through Jesus Christ. I want you to understand the purpose that God has put upon our lives is beyond our lives. That's why if we have a vision of our own, our vision will die when we die. But the purpose of, of God will continue even after our lives are over. We need to cross the river. We need to sit in the presence of God and ask God, God, what am I doing? Am I fulfilling your purpose? Yes, I'm not saying that we can be, we, sh we, we have to just uh, uh, like, you know, not take care of ourselves and our family. I'm not saying that we need to build our lives in God. Well, yes, we need to build our families, but not just for ourselves. But build lives and our families for the kingdom. Then only then it has an eternal relevance. How many of you know at the end of our lives, God is going to test the work of our hands with fire. Paul says only things that are made of stone and costly metals will pass through that. But things that are made of hay, wood and uh, stone, it's going to be burnt. We need to, we need to cross very far. Are we living for a profession? Is our life all about having a profession or is our life is about fulfilling God's purpose in our lives? Because when we know that, we know that we are not living a life that is selfish. I want to uh, bring your attention to Philippians chapter 2. I have not put the words there, but, but when you have time, just go through it. Philippians chapter 2. Four people's names were mentioned there. Four, four names are mentioned in Philippians chapter 2. One is Timothy, Epaphroditus, Paul, and Jesus. When Paul is writing to the church at Philippi, he's talking about, I want you to look into the lives of these four men because they lived a life which was selfless, expressing Jesus. They didn't live for themselves. They lived for the gospel. Timothy considers other better than himself. Epaphroditus risked his life for the sake of the gospel. I myself, Paul, I'm pouring out my life as a drink offering. And he says, Jesus went to the cross to die on the cross. He was obedient until death and death on the cross. None of them lived for themselves. They lived for others. Their purpose was not about themselves. That's why we tell in our church, Paul didn't start Paul's international ministry. Peter didn't start Peter's international ministry. These guys just lived for the sake of God. They lived and died for Christ. Simple as that. They lived for the sake of the gospel. Their, li their life purpose, even today after 2000 years, we are talking about them is because they didn't limit the purpose of God only with their lives. They lived the purpose which was beyond them for generations to come. I want to tell you there is a purpose that God has placed upon you all. The purpose that God has called you is not just with your life, it's beyond your life. And finally, I want to end with this. Three things we saw about how to increase our immune. One is that we would fill our lives with the Holy Spirit constantly coming into the presence of God. We would actually uh, build our lives in the word of God. For that, we need to go into an orderly learning. We need to go into a time where we set apart to learn the word. How are we going to pass on the faith to the next generation? Because next generation is walking out of the faith. If we don't do the work today, tomorrow they are going to walk out. We need to fill our lives with the word of God and, and we need to live for the purposes of God. And finally, this is a call for the churches of God to be a watchman. A call to be a watchman. A call to be a watchman. In Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17 to 18, God said to Ezekiel, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to a wicked person, you will surely die and you do not warn them or speak out to dissuade them from their evil ways in order to save their life, that wicked person will die for their sin and I will hold you accountable for their blood. This is a little scary, right? God says that we are the watchmen and every life when people die with sin, he says, I'm going to hold you accountable for that. There's a call for us to be the watchmen for our city. A call for us where God will deal with the city through the church. 
God will deal the nations through the churches of the nation. God will use the church to touch people's lives. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he's calling us today. He's calling us today so that we shall increase our immunity to all these troubles and trials. And we would stand strong so that we can help others, those who are struggling. We can actually rescue those who are caught into these troubles. But for us, for that first, we need to increase our immunity in God. We need to increase our, our strength in God so that we can be that watchman. So that when people watch our lives, they will know how are these people so confident? How are these people standing strong? And they will see the light of God shining in our lives and they will come to God. This is the time that the church cannot be silent. This is the time that the church cannot be silent. This is the time that we need to become, we need to intercede. In Jeremiah 29, 7, God speaks to the nation of Israel. He says, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Meaning, wherever God takes us, whichever nation we live in, God is asking us to pray for the nation so that the nation can prosper. So that when that nation prospers, we will also prosper. That's what God says. It is, for, it is our duty, wherever, whichever part of the country we are in, it is our duty to pray for the nations. It is our duty to pray for the nation where we live. It is our responsibility to pray. Paul says, pray for all authorities. Pray for all authorities. I want to uh, end with a promise and then we are going to go into a time of prayer. I want to pray for all of you this morning and, and pray that God will strengthen you and use you powerfully to touch many lives. Uh, one of the meetings when uh, we were praying for uh, nations and uh, it was a meeting where uh, some of our church members are living in, in abroad and uh, they, were, they, are, they were in US and uh, some of them are in uh, UK and Europe and uh, some of them serving in the hospitals. They are doctors and nurses. So, so we want to actually encourage them. So we got into a call and we were praying uh, for them to encourage them as well as we were praying for the situations around. And, and as we were praying for the nations, this is the word that uh, God gave me. This is the word that uh, God uh, whispered in my heart is that uh, he was saying that I have not forgotten. I have not forgotten you. I am not done with these nations. Europe has turned away from God. In U.S., we see how many, how many uh, different philosophies and things that are done against God. Things that people go away from God. And, and God is saying, I have not forgotten you. I have not done with these nations yet. And when we go into Isaiah 44, he talks about that I have made you and I will not forget you. These are the nations which gave the Gospels to the third world. Gave the Gospels to the Asia, to the south of global south. But today, it is time that God is saying, I'm not done with these nations. I'm going to rebuild them. I'm, going to, I'm, I'm not given up on them. I have not forgotten you. But I want to tell you, if this, is, this has to happen. Churches has to rise up. Churches has to become that watchman. Churches have to become stronger and, and pray for godly things to happen in your nation. Amen. Why don't we pray together this morning? Uh, how many minutes I have? You have enough time. Yes. Take your time, uh, yeah. Am I overshooting time or? No, 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 no. Why don't we all uh, pray together this morning? And uh, if God has spoken to you about how you need to, if He has indicated about those things that you need to work on in your life. I want you to surrender your lives to God this morning and say, God, every every low immune of Father Lord Master today be touched and Father Lord, I want to grow. Strengthen me from inside out. Fill me with your spirit. I want each and every one of you to ask God this morning. And this is what I tell people every time we pray together. I tell people, never be ashamed to come for prayer. Never be ashamed to stand up and ask God because you're not asking any man. You're asking your father. Have you seen children? They will not even think about for a moment when they want to ask something from their parents. They'll just come and say, Daddy, I need this. And this morning, I want you to ask, uh, if at all, uh, is there anything that is controlling you? I want you to ask God to set you free this morning. I want
want you to ask God to fill you with the Spirit. I want you to ask God to give you the strength to to really take a commitment this morning that you would become a person who would master the Word of God. I'm going to sing a song which says that you are God alone. I want you to sing along with me and glorify God and. Even not a God created by human hands. Even not a God defended any mortal man. Even not a God in need of anything we can do by your plan. That's just the way it is. You're the only God. You're the only God. The only God is worthy of anything we can do. You're the only God who's worthy of anything we can do by your hand. That's just the way it is. You are God alone. Oh, you are God alone from before time began. God alone right now in the good times and bad. Oh, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Oh, you are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone right now. family of God this morning and, and declaring that Father even during this time you are in complete control. Oh you are seated on the throne. Oh nothing can change it this morning Lord. And we declare that you are the Lord of our families. We declare that you are the Lord of our lives. Oh nothing can shake us. Nothing can shake us because we are not part of this world which is shaking right now. We are part of the world. We are part of the kingdom that is unshakable kingdom. Unstoppable kingdom. Oh, unchangeable kingdom. Oh, Just open up and worship God this morning. Let heaven sweep open. Your plans are still to prosper. You have not forgotten us. You're with us in the fire and the blood. You're faithful forever, perfect to love. You are sovereign over us. Your plans, your plans are still to prosper. You have not forgotten us. You're with us in the fire and the blood. You're faithful. 
this morning i father lord master pray that your hand will come upon the church the sacramental father this morning father i pray that your hand will come upon them oh father god lord i pray this morning master god everyone of oh father lord who who asked you who looked up to you this morning oh father god and asked for the prayers oh father i pray that you would answer oh father at the right time oh lord you would father lord master must lord touch them and father lord master fill them with your spirit of oh father god lord i pray if there is any such things that we discussed of oh father god master a uh, low immune factors of oh father god master sins in our lives be broken in the name of jesus of oh father god bondages of this world of oh father god be broken in the name of jesus of oh father god master we pray father lord jesus if any one of oh father lord who was listening to this of oh father god master and they have of oh father lord master a doubt about their salvation today be the day of oh father of their salvation of oh father that you would touch them you would of oh father reveal yourself to them of oh father god that they would understand who you are of oh master god and they would give their lives to you oh lord jesus as father lord we pray that your power of the holy spirit come upon each and every one of them including children i pray oh father god that you would fill them with your power you would fill them with your presence oh father god master lord i pray oh father god every time when they sit down as a family to read the word of oh father god i pray that you would lead them you would talk to them you would oh father lord master minister to them you would build them strong oh father god lord i pray oh master lord when they build their lives on you oh father god master satan will be ashamed to touch them oh father because he knows that he will be defeated oh father god master i pray i pray father over eternal life church of god at sacrament and i pray oh father god master satan will not dare to put his hand upon anybody of oh father god because of oh master you are going to increase their immunity in the spiritual life of oh father god you are going to make them stronger of oh father god lord i pray that this church will be a church of oh father which will be a watchman to the city of oh master god they would of oh father be in sync with you they would oh walk with you of oh father god and they would know what the lord is going to do in our city of oh father they would rise up and pray oh father lord and intervene oh father god anything that is going to happen to that city and oh father god according to their words according to their prayers you would oh father answer and you would oh father do things in that city oh master god as father lord especially i pray if there is anyone oh father going through sickness this morning we pray there will be deliverance of oh father god there will be healing of oh father god master yes lord you are a god who listens to our prayers and you heal our sicknesses you heal our sicknesses so oh father god yes master lord lord i pray lord i pray oh father god anyone having migraines this morning father be healed in the name of jesus migraines be healed in the name of jesus i cast away every form of migraine oh father god lord i pray especially for somebody whose son is going through some kind of issue in their brain oh father i pray this morning oh father healing i proclaim healing in the name of jesus healing in the name of jesus father kidney stones to be dissolved in the name of jesus kidney stones to be dissolved in the name of jesus this morning oh father we ask you we ask you father it is you father lord who performs signs and wonders to to make us understand you are the lord of all you are the lord of god you are the lord of all you are the lord of our lives this morning we ask you every prayer that is being made in the name of jesus we ask you father god that you would graciously answer us father strengthen us during this time strengthen us so that we would be an instrument in your hand to touch many people so father god around us we give you all the glory and honor thank you for listening to our prayer oh master in jesus mighty name we pray